JVB's Final Thoughts, Episode 18, What Will Matter to Me When I'm 80? Joe Bustillo's here, sorry about the lack of podcasts, and you may also notice that we've gone audio podcast only. More on that in the future. As of tonight, I am now 89 days into this next chapter of my life. When I was let go at the end of October, I was given six weeks severance plus two weeks vacation time that I hadn't taken. All this translates into the realization that the money ran out about three weeks ago. Yeah, this shit's getting very real. It's been one hell of a roller coaster, but mostly it feels like I'm racing towards the bottom and it's taking so long to get there, I have no real way to measure time or how concerned I should feel about things. Two things that have really helped me over the weeks have been my friendship and interaction with Holly and my relationship with Maggie. Somewhat akin to the support that I got when I was recovering from my illness, I have no idea how I'd be doing if it weren't for this constant support that I've been getting from these two friends. Touching base with family and friends when I got back to California for the Christmas holiday was also a much needed reset and rethink of things. And the local groups of skeptics is a great source of allowing me to refocus on other things beyond my concern for paying bills and looking for work. It really helps to have friends to talk to. Surprise, no one makes it without the help of others. I learned that one when I was ill. I guess I'm getting another dose of it again. So this past week, I arranged to get more funding from the 401k my previous employer had set up for me. That way, I can delay selling my blood or defaulting on all my lovely debt. Damn, just when I thought I was getting ahead of things, now that I have a roommate paying for one of the bedrooms, the whole damn system gets kicked aside. Ain't life grand. So 12 weeks into this adventure, and I'm still not sure what the best course of action should be. I filed for unemployment, deferred two of my three student loans, and spent days and days and days on LinkedIn looking for and applying for mostly teaching-related jobs. I spent the first couple of weeks putting together a resume website. For the last six years, I've created and presented master's level courses fully on the internet. So I should know something about creating an online presence. Thank you very much. After the initial crush of being told that, quote unquote, my services were no longer needed, bastards, the next emotional gut punch was looking for jobs and realizing just how special my former job had been and that there was a huge possibility that I would have to leave Central Florida to find the right position given my experiences and expertise. I don't think that I had been seeing Maggie for even a whole month when the layoff happened. Even with that little time together, I wasn't willing to say, oh well, and just walk away from our relationship. It's a huge complication, but it's also helped me to continue to work day after day, examining what it is that I'm supposed to be doing with this supposed opportunity. Last month, I applied for nine positions with Apple, only a couple that were local. Having not heard from them, I recently rechecked and only three of the positions were still open and all three of those were based in Cupertino. A couple weeks ago, I looked into teaching jobs at a local university, UCF, after they touted that they had 200 positions to fill for the next fall. Alas, most of those positions were either outside my areas of expertise or were PhDs only positions. Yeah, time for a reality check here. The 401k money is only going to last so long. 24 applications have been submitted. I've done one virtual interview and had two informal callbacks. It's difficult to know which direction to go in next. I know it's important to not sacrifice long-term goals because of short-term needs, but knowing how to balance all of this is maddening. After seeing the local Apple positions dry up, I need to get out of the house and think. Earlier, Maggie had offered the suggestion that maybe I should take this time to restart and finish my doctoral studies. Holly wondered that if that really was going to get me where I wanted to be. And how the hell was I going to pay for this or even the damn bills that I already have? Too many things to think about. So I came upon this notion, should I be fortunate enough to have another 20 plus years to add to my existence? I thought, when I'm 80 years old, what is it that I'm going to be pissed off about not having done and what will I hold on to most dearly as defining my short stay here? What are the things that I haven't done that would suck if they remained undone when I reflect back on my life. Is the PhD really that important or is it part of a larger mission? Thinking about my recent history, I've been on an exhausting journey that lasted six years and left little time or energy for anything else and required my every waking minute to do the best that I could possibly do. When I was let go, I was more than a little bothered that I hadn't spent the last year or two working on the books that I'd been thinking about and planning to do, but there had been almost no energy or time for that. 
and I would have stayed at my post for as long as I could. Hell, I lost the use of my legs in independence, and with the huge help of my friends, I stayed at my post and never took leave of my responsibilities. So I've been diverted from that path. How will I spend these next years? Looking back, what will be most important to me? To be continued. Thank you for uh, spending this time with me at uh, JBB's Final Thoughts. Please uh, check out my website at joebustillos.com. That's J-O-E-B-U-S-T-I-L-L-O-S dot com for more of my musings and thoughts. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.